Hello and welcome to another PingCast. I hope you're ready to have another bowl of Linux soup. Today is a special day because it's the very first episode of my Slack Spins. It's going to be a series dedicated to reviews and overviews of Slackware spin-offs. I hope you enjoy the series and today we're going to be taking a look at Vector Linux. I have uh, downloaded the installable ISO for the XFCE version. This is install only to the hard disk. There's no live environment. There is a live CD you can get, and I've read that you can turn it into an installer, but it doesn't tell you how. So I'm just going to start this in VirtualBox. I'm going to full screen this. Uh, I'm just going to hit enter at boot. I'm not going to give it any parameters. I'll just give it a 10 by 24, 1024 by 768 resolution. All right, here we are at the installer. Uh, we're gonna select our localization settings. English, U.S., and generic is good. I'll just click next, and it's going to search for the media, and it's in slash dev slash sr0. Now this is interesting, help me resize my partition. It actually doesn't help you. It brings you up to, uh, it opens up Gene Parted and you have to manually partition your drives. There is no auto partition for Vector Linux. You can't just select install alongside like you could uh, using the Ubuntu or derivative. So I'm just going to select that. And now we're going to make the partition in G Parted. Uh, I'm going to go to device and create a partition table, an MS-DOS partition table. Then I'm going to create one new uh, extension for primary partition. That will take up the entire space. I'm going to hit apply to make the change. And this is a bit weird because it just opens it up and then you got to tell GPARD that you're done. I have to now exit out of GPARD, so I'm going to go to GPARD and quit. Uh, basically brings it up, you do your partitioning, then you quit, then it moves on, we click next. And most other distros, it'll, you'll just, uh, you'll partition, but you'll also, uh, put a, a sort of a label on the partition, you'll tell it what it is that you want the partition to be, whether it's root, home, or boot, whatever. This used you party tell it to apply, quit, we move on. And now, we tell the mount point, and I'm going to have it be root. Uh, no need to format; it's already extension four. Next, we can do a full install. We can do a customized install or a minimal. We'll just do full install today. All right, we're going to do a full install. And if you're installing this for real and you have nothing to do, you can go down here to the menu that shows and hides itself, and we have some games here. Take your pick, you can keep yourself entertained while you install the system. Alright, the install is complete, now we're going to configure the system. Uh, once I click on next. Okay. Now unlike Slack where we actually can install Grub instead of using Lilo. You have a choice between Lilo, Grub, and None. We can change our prompt timeout among other things, so I will just leave the defaults and click Next. Alright, now we have our regional settings. I'm just going to use UTC. You want local time if you're using Windows. US Eastern. We enter our root password.
I don't know if you can hear anything in the background, but it's raining now. It just started. Alright, now we make our login name. I'm Pingcast. And we can actually uh, click this and change our picture to something else, but I'll just leave it default. Here we can have our, uh, we can add our user to other groups. You might want to tick wheel. And we'll click next. I'll just leave the default next. Here you'll, uh, you'll have your different services. You'll tick cups is for printing. I don't need printing a virtual machine. GPM has sort of a um, mouse-like interface for uh, your TTY, that might be good to tick. Samba, if you're working with Windows. You can tick firewall if you want, just keep in mind if you want SSHD and you tick that, that you're going to have to open up the proper port for SSH. And I will click Next. And we will reboot. Here we have a very, very attractive looking splash. And I'll just boot the first option. Now this is going to uh, work with Zerzorg.com. Try auto first. And you just select other options if something didn't work. Yes, this will attempt to run without a zorg.com. And you only do that the first time you install the system. Actually, in fact, it will reboot the system once you do that. Alright, now we've booted into our vector Linux system. And here is XFCE, and we have a very nice looking desktop. I'll just untick the display tips on startup, but it's very, very attractive. We have a very beautiful wallpaper, great dock aesthetics. Panel is looking pretty good. Very nice looking desktop, and I really like the. Uh, icon theme, although I think they use a lot of the Linux Mint icons in their theme, but uh, they have some unique icons. You can see the right click menu. Okay, so if you go to the menu, and we look through the programs, we have run program, we got our emulator. And now, if we look at the file manager, the first time you open it, you gotta choose your preferred application for some reason. I don't know why. Just select Thunar, it's your only choice other than the other. Click OK. And you have Thunar. Which is really weird. The web browser is Firefox. You'd think that it would be default already, but it's not. If we look at the theme on the window border, it's got the red, green, blue. I think that's uh, kind of like a Mac. I think they do the red... Wait, did I say red, green, blue? I mean red, green, yellow. I think Mac does that. So we've got a Mac thing going with the buttons in regards to the color. Uh. The theme is uh, quite nice looking. They have some other themes. They actually have some themes that could uh, can make the desktop look a little more like a Mac. But in our accessories, we'll ha we have a root terminal. This just opens up a terminal as root. Yeah, the prompt isn't what I normally use.
Okay, what else do we have in accessories? We have a screenshot utility, we have a thesaurus. I wonder what Tux Cards is. Hmm. We have X Archiver and Leaf Pad for our uh, text editor. Orage, sort of like a calendar application. We have G Calculator. In our development, we have CMake. I don't know what that is. Epidoc, uh, 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 I'm not sure. Genie is Glade, I think, is for GTK development. Um, this is VL Qwik. Uh, you click on it. Uh, there should be one for games. Pop in your root password. It'll update the system with new repository info if it has to. I haven't updated the system yet. Something you'll probably want to do right off the bat. And it should pop up with a list. No, not at the moment. Uh, it should pop up with a list of stuff. You can just tick it to install it. And just a whole list of stuff. If you're interested. And gslapped is the uh, GUI package manager. Uh, it's a front end to slapped get, which is sort of like apt for Slackware. Uh, it, slapped get will auto resolve dependencies for the most part with the exception of official Slackware packages, those will not have their dependencies resolved. Everything else should, and I do believe uh, Vector Links has its own repository for packages. So if we open up a terminal, uh, let me see if I remember my slap get commands. I should be slap get dash dash search package slap get dash dash install and it remove and upgrade. You use a lot of double hyphens with this package manager. But yeah, you can give that a read if you want. You can open up the graphical package manager, G slapped if you don't care for the command prompt. Uh, it looks kind of like synaptic. Where are we? G slapped. Open this up, and it's kind of like Synaptic. Mark all upgrades, and you have update for updating the system. And just search for what you want. I like Synaptic, so this is kind of uh, neat. Flash plugin. Let's see if this plays YouTube videos out of the box. Indeed, it does. Alright. So, let's look at accessories. Already looked at that. Development, education. We can get education through that VLQWIC menu, which is pretty neat. It gives you a list of uh, things you can install, I guess, sort of like recommendations. Uh, you can do that for uh, games as well if you want to get some games for the system. We have Shotwell and Geeky for uh, looking at and managing photos. We have Inkscape and GIMP uh, in the internet. They use WICD for the network management instead of NM Applet. Opera is also installed instead of Firefox. Uh, Pigeon is included for your instant messaging needs. I really like Pigeon, I really like WICD, and I'm glad to see them installed. And I like LeafPad too. Uh, Chestnut, I think, is for dial-up. Where was I? Internet. Uh, I'm not sure what... Well, it's probably something to do with FTP app, yeah, graphical 
front end to FTP, I guess. Uh, and in multimedia, we have Bracero for disc burning, Exhale for our music. Uh, you can also stream radio. You can add your own radio stations and stream through Exhale. Uh, you can look through your files. Uh, I believe Linux Mint had this as its music player for one, at one time, and it's pretty neat. I like it. Uh, here's GNOME M Player for our video needs. And... Grip. I have not actually used this before in the development version. It looks like it's meant to rip things. I wonder if it can play things as well. Looks like ripping and coding. Alright, so we also have a uh, mixer. What are we using? Are we using Alsa? Yep, Alsa. I like also, we have a mixer for it. If we go to select controls, we can pick what controls we want. Uh, we have UM player, I've never seen that before. Oh, this is sort of like a YouTube. I guess, uh, maybe we can search YouTube. How about we search Pingcasts? Oh, cool. Uh, I can't really hear anything, though. I have my headphones on, so you guys won't hear anything. Uh,. Oh, there we go. But wow, this is actually pretty nice. We can look at a DVD from the drive, but I don't have anything from the DVD drive. Hmm. I wonder. If I go to my videos, and we can stream a URL. Wow, this looks like a pretty cool application. I'll definitely perhaps uh, play with it and do a video on it in the future. Yeah, I've uh, I did a sort of a, a test run with uh, Vector, and I was uh, yeah pretty kind of impressed with it. It's a pretty good little system here. We have design. I haven't really used that. Let's see what we have under here. Yep, just lists of stuff, extra software you can install. Which would help you out, I suppose, if you're new and don't know the names of a whole lot of software, or if you're just looking for new things. Certainly helps. We have Abby Word and GNU Merrick for our office needs. So Abby Word for our wood, word processor and um, GNU Merrick uh, for a spreadsheet. Unfortunately, no PowerPoint. J Pilot looks like some sort of calendar application. We don't have a PowerPoint equivalent. Or age calendar. 
use Tux card skin, we have EPDS viewer for PDF needs. I like this. They have a lot of applications installed by default that I really like. Now if you look at the system, we can bulk rename with Thunar. We have Disk Utility, which you might be familiar with if you've run Pin Guy. This is for firewall. This is GUFW. It's a GUI friend to UFW and stands for GUI Uncomplicated Firewall. This is a front end to IP tables. We can enable and disable the firewall. If it's enabled, remember if you're running services, you might have to have ports forwarded. So this is now enabled, so I can no longer use SSH because my firewall will block it, so I'll just add it. I'll go to Pre-configured, allow in, it's a service, and select SSH, and it'll open it on the default port of 22, but if I want to use a different port, I don't know, 2000, uh, simple, we allow in TCP, and I could say port 2000, and you could SSH through there. And I haven't really messed with the advanced too much. All right. And here's Cairo Doc. GRSync, that's probably GUI front end to RSync, which can be used as a backup utility. Very cool. And if we look at the system, here's G slap again, H top for uh, figuring out uh, processes and system resources. We can use it to kill processes. And in system, we have log in a new window. And this is going to use Xnest, I think. Oh, wrong application. This will, pardon me, uh, this will uh, change the login screen. Uh, do local, they, you can disable remote logins. And here we have, oh, manage printing, that's for cups, I don't have the print server running. Uh, it'll open up something in your web browser, I forget which port, 631. Uh, we, here we have new login and new login window, this will just take you back to the login screen. This will open up Xnest, and it'll uh, log in and do it sort of like a local host login, that way we can just log in in a new window. I wonder if I could log in as myself again. Nope. Alright. Here we have printing, our terminal, Thunar, and GK Realm. Some of you might not be familiar with this. Think of it as the lazy man's or the uh, novice's conky. Uh, you don't configure it in the same manner as Conky, you, ha you just graphically tick options. So it's not as flexible, however there are tons of plugins you can get for it. Not great looking, there are some nice looking themes for it, and there are a lot of themes out there, but a lot of them just aren't visually appealing. But here you can configure it. Uh, you can have a short host name, now just as Victor, system name display. You can have it uh, start up at the same spot startup. You can have multiple instances or just allow a single instance. Uh, what else can we do? If it's a sticky, that should make it go on multiple desktops. You can make it go below all other windows. And it'll be included on the taskbar and pagers. So we can actually remove it from those. And here we have a very 
easy to set up Conky essentially. Uh, here we have Vasm. So, oh, it's an administration menu, which is pretty nice. We can reset to default settings. We can change the default window manager. You can change your password. That's pretty cool. So in system, I guess that's to set the CPU frequency. And probably because it's in a virtual machine. And we can get more system applications. So we can get graphical front end to cron tab so that we can graphically uh, use crons, uh, have uh, actions uh, triggered at a certain point in time. Ooh, G Smart Control, you might want that. Yeah, so that's more system applications you can get for your system. And here we have Cairodoc down here. Looks, I guess, looks kind of like they're using the uh, OSX theme, but with a different icon set. And here we have Exhale again. And they use, oops, if you go to Cairo Dock and configure, they have the uh, advanced mode by default. You can just click on simple mode, and it'll go back to simple mo mode. You can click advanced to get back to what they had. Here on the desktop, we only have one uh, distro specific wallpaper, the rest are stock standard XFCE. Uh, if we look in Not sure if it went to uh, settings. Anyways, if we look in the appearance, we have tons of themes. Uh, let's see, we have that, those two themes. Uh, there are a few Apple looking ones. I like XSC Dusk. That's a good looking thing. I think it goes quite nicely with. Uh, the background, and this icon thing. Here we are, leopardish. And see, it's very Mac like. Very nice. Uh, let's look at settings. Uh, window manager tweaks. Uh, you can toggle your compositor on and off. I don't recommend doing that because Cairo Dock is going to depend upon the compositor. But here we can control transparency settings for the window decorations, uh, inactive windows, uh, windows you're going to move, you're going to resize, pop up windows. Here you can uh, uh, tweak your workspaces. You have accessibility options. Now one thing I don't get is why we have this here, but we have the dock down here for selecting applications. I think maybe we could just get rid of that applet, remove the window buttons. Uh, I like the fact that we have WICD here. Uh, Nothing against NM Apple, I just really like WICD. Uh, I like Pigeon, I use that for instant messaging. Uh, one thing I do like is in addition to VI, they also have Vim by default, because it's my text editor of choice. They don't have Emacs for any of you Emacs fans out there, unfortunately. Um, I'm glad that GIMP is included by default. So we have a, an image editor by default. 
you have shot well for managing photos, but I don't understand why then we'd need a geeky to look at photos. And I don't know why we need Zine. I think that's a media player. I don't know why we need that. And here we have M player, no mem player. I don't see why we need Zine. Now this UM player I've never seen before, but I like the look of it and looks like a very useful application. And it can play DVD, so I don't know if this can do everything no M or M player can do. Then I don't know why we need that installed. And so uh, we got a few repeats down here on the dock. Volume, volume, logout, logout, show desktop, show desktop. Uh, I don't know why we need to have that in multiple places. seems kind of repetitive and unnecessary. So if I just uh, remove that. I already have a workspace switcher up top. You don't need the logout. It'll keep everything nice and slim. Here we can uh, open folder, go through the desktop. Uh, I don't know why we only have a desktop folder. Uh, you could create other folders, but you won't have. I think the you have unique identifiers on some of the folders. Uh, I'm not sure how to query and slap get. See here, slash get. So I guess they don't have the DIRS update. That would generate a bunch of folders for your user. Unless maybe we have it by default. And we don't. So I guess we could make directory videos, public, documents, Downloads, templates. Uh, I think that's everything. So I don't know why we can't have the other folders by default. So those are a few things that I, uh, I'm not too fond of in uh, Vector Linux. Just little uh, nitpicks here, but overall. I really like this distro. It's aesthetically pleasing. It has applications that I like. It had a few that I didn't know of. It had one that looked really awesome, and I'll have to look at it in the future. But this looks like a very good distro, and I definitely would recommend this to anyone who's interested in trying Slack, or just be able to partition yourself. Otherwise, I would recommend against installing VectorLink. So, of course, you can get the live ISO and try it in the live CD. And I have to give this uh, distro a two thumbs up. Good job, guys, and just keep up the good work. I hope you enjoyed this uh, Slack spin, and stay tuned for another one.